out in the backyards of New Brunswick. But where does this old paved road gonna lead us? Stay with us. Today we explore a different mine. Today we explore the Mount Pleasant mine. Here we are at the Mount Pleasant Tin Mine, and there's a truck right there on the premises. But wow, what a facility! Right here in the backyards of New Brunswick. And this location was a tin mine. They were going to shut down when they started. I guess the price was already dropping, but they had so much invested, they had to start right Yeah. Let's see what they could get out of it, I suppose. Well, they put 12 mile of tunnel down there, 20 foot square. Yes, sir. And it's all on a, like a 20% downward grade, right? Like it's, it's a big hole they put in the ground. They took a lot of stuff out of here in a short time to run. So is the added still there? Hmm? The added, the mine, the, the actual tunnel itself? Oh, well, you can just see the end of it here. It's flooded now. I figured, I seen pictures, it looked like it was flooded. Oh, well, there's 100 to 150 gallon a minute runs out of it now, with water. Yes, sir. All right, we've got to treat it with lime. The water, the hole in the ground. Right. Wow. At 100 gallon a minute, that's a big area. Yes. Yeah. But it used to come out that conveyor and drop into the A-frame area. Yeah. And then the ore transferred over into the mill part they cracked it up processed and separated quite a sophisticated situation here oh yeah yeah it's a shame like you say the market took a change yeah now the chinese own it and they don't want to run it right they just want to control it because they've they've done drill projects and stuff there's a lot of uh indium in the ground here that they know of now but it's close to the surface I imagine that would be open to it if they ever mined it, but Indium's worth a lot of money if you look it up. It's, they don't price it by the ton, it's by the kilogram. Yes, sir. He was here when they built the place. Oh, wow. He's got over 40 years here. He's the only one that had a lifetime drill up here, right? So he was maintenance. So he did maintenance underground, too. He, he'd go underground with that stuff. But mostly it was machinery. That's where the ore came out right there. So that's the actual tunnel right over there? That's one of the tunnels right there. They used to drive in about 150 yards down. There was a spot where they drove in. They got it buried now, but there was a big set of double doors there. So they used to drive the equipment in. Oh, that's so cool. Unbelievable. Right through the rock face, there goes the entrance into the mine. As you can see, it's very, very flooded. Yeah. How deep does that tunnel right there go in? And you said it goes down at an angle as well? It goes down at about a 20 degree angle and it's 12 miles long. 12 miles into the mountain. 12 miles of tunnel. It's not all going in a straight line. Like it, but it's, yeah, Just all the workings. Tunnel. Foot square. So at one point that would have been pumped out so you could access it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah, when they were working here, of course, they kept it pumped out. They just shut the pumps off when they, uh, when they stopped working it. Ceased operation, shut her down. It was taking a couple of years to pump it out dry. Because so you said it was well over a year for it to fill up? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. These guys rent part of the building. They're drilling for gold. Right. So these core samples is yeah. what they're looking to see where the ore is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's fascinating. Yeah. You no, know, they got a whole team of geologists and they got young fellows here cutting the they cut the core sample right in half, right? Like the year looking at the round.
down stuff, she's looking at the flat stuff there where they've sliced it in half. Yep. They sent half away to the lab to examine it. Just to find the gold content. It's quite a process. It is really. It's uh, yeah. That's fascinating. Look at all the different quartz, but yeah. Like I said earlier, when they find quartz, they usually know that there's gold handy. Yeah, quartz is a good sign, a good quartz vein. Yeah. It's very fascinating. And uh, that was back before I come to work here, but Roger was up there digging around, straightening up the roads and stuff, and he came across these two core parts. So we fetched them under the ground and brought them down here. But so they were buried in the ground from the past, the, yeah, we'll say the there. 40s, I guess. Yeah. They were... Uh, Big. Must have been good gear at the time. So I couldn't believe it myself. The wheels still spin, even though they were submerged they were under the ground. Around. I'd like to know what I had in it for bearings. The wheels spin. Yeah, that would be wonderful on my Honda Ford. <laughs> just, uh, just an afterthought, after all. But wow, these are amazing. Somehow. Must have rested on top. Yeah. yeah. Boys, that must have been some intense pulling that around. Exactly. Full of the ore, yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is fascinating. say but this mine hasn't run since 85. It's surprising the wildlife that lives in that tub of settlement farm. Oh I bet. It probably has its own ecosystem now. Oh yeah the loons live there all summer. There's beavers in it which we have problems with because they like to build dams of course. One thing about it though obviously the water treated is working because yes. it's not doing any disruption to their ecosystem. Exactly. No I figured if this place would have made a go of it in the 80s it would have ruined the Macadabra River. You know it uh, would have bled through, I suppose. Oh, yeah, because this, this here feeds into hatch.